Chapter 45 Now you have nearly finished this book. Some will be yawning and put it on the shelf. Some will meditate over it, will think of the unknown disciple and his master. An ancient occult tradition says that everything about spiritual matters is best read at least seven times. And only at the seventh reading will the student enter into the realm revealed. I have read the little book, The Voice of the Silence, by H.P. Blavatsky, at least seven times seven. And with each reading, more light poured from its pages. Similarly, with the Viveka Chudamani by Sri Shankaracharya. So the method is proved and sound and practical. If you will give the necessary time and perseverance, the silence through vichara will stop your restless mind, and the real will manifest itself. Do not try to hasten the process. Perhaps this book was written for you, not for the outer you, but the real you. For you and I are one. Often questions arise which may be anticipated. Let us answer some of them. Is the path shown by one of the last great rishis appropriate for you? If when reading or listening to the teachings and lives of spiritual geniuses, whom we call saints and sages, your heart melts and you feel that the invisible spiritual current draws you in, and know that it may be a call for you. Let us not extinguish those delicate movements of the spiritual flame, which is hidden deep below the layers of our personality. When in such moments everything in you melts into a mighty desire to step after him, after this still unknown but already beloved master, then in fact he is calling you. It is the only way he can call, from within your being, not from without. If you see, as in the brightness of a lightning flash, the whole unreality of the visible world, including your temporary limited form, called till now you, then prepare yourself for the great pilgrimage. Forget then the past and the future, the petty aims of your transient physical existence, only the eternal, unchanging, glorious present has henceforth to concern you. Everything apart from this true self is false. Your vampire-like ego, your maya, the illusion or realm of the unreal, If an irresistible desire to enter on the path does not arise in you, if you cannot realize that what this path is really about, then it is clear the time is not yet ripe for you. The ordinary ways of life are more appropriate. To be honest, good and full of sympathy is a necessary step towards the direct path, which will reveal itself in due course. I do not wish to conceal difficulties which will surely be encountered on the path. Therefore, you should know that to create evil by thoughts, deeds, or feelings when once on the path will lead to danger and catastrophe. So said the Lord Buddha, Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Purify your own heart. Those are qualities which develop in the disciple when he really engages in vichara. The self-inquiry itself creates these virtues. That is logical. When you cease to recognize your ego, where will be the motive for doing evil? When the ego disappears, all evil goes with it. The fulfillment of the above three commandments produces a saint. 
and saintship is the real first step to liberation or self-realization. Do not doubt that statement. There are more saints about at the present time than many people suppose, and they do not all wear monks' robes and have shaven heads. They may look like average men. A saint can only be recognized if he chooses to reveal himself, and his ways of life apparently do not differ much from those of others. Only an intimate contact with him will reveal his saintship. As a wise yogi once said, if a flower has honey, the bee will find it. It is not the flower which seeks the bee. So it will be with your entry on the path and into discipleship of a master. As the bee finds the flower, so you will find him. Sri Ramana Maharshi said to his intimate disciples, There is no alternative for you but to accept the world as unreal. If you are seeking truth and truth alone, for the simple reason that unless you give up the idea that the world is real, your mind will always be after it. If you take the appearance to be real, you will never know the real itself. Although it is the real alone that exists. This saying is of great importance to the seeker. How does a disciple realize that condition? It comes gradually, but irresistibly, as self-inquiry proceeds. Practically, you feel as if you were separated from your visible, physical form. Walking, speaking, and performing different activities, you begin to feel that you are beyond and above the acting form. It is a wonderful feeling of freedom and bliss. No doubts or fears exist. These moments are rare in the beginning, it is true, but in the course of progress they come more and more frequently. These are the first rays of the light of your true self, which is happiness itself. Years ago, when meditating about my master, I conceived him to be a lord of bliss, and when I saw him, I gave myself to him forever. From that time on, the world had no more appeal. I lost my little self reflected in the conventional life. As the scriptures say, naked man must stand before the Most High. Everywhere we find the guideposts on the path. By giving up everything, we find all. The paradox is realized. The mystical truth is proved. If we are unhappy, it is our own error. Therefore, do not believe that there are circumstances or conditions which are responsible for the darkness within us. It is the ego mind which begets this lie. For no limitations concern the real you. It is difficult at first to realize our separateness from the visible form in the state of sleep. For innumerable ages of existence in separate forms, we acquired the habit of merging our consciousness in darkness when asleep. But as self-inquiry proceeds, it will enlighten even this bastion of darkness in due course. When you dive into the sea, you take off your clothes beforehand, When you dive into the self in samadhi, you must put aside your outer little self. The thoughts and emotions must be discarded, at least temporarily, before samadhi can be experienced. Many books could be written about these experiences, 
but they would be of little use without the practice of vichara. And then everything comes of its own accord, just as Maharshi says. Knowing the self by means of self-inquiry, you will find your master within yourself. Now it may be clear why disciples of the master are always conscious of his presence. Every devotee will find him in his own heart, though he has not seen him in his physical form. And this invisible presence is as potent as was his physical one. Nevertheless, there is a strange power and inspiration in the pictures of Maharshi. Were it not so, he would never have permitted them to be made. May the grace of the great being to whom this book is dedicated enlighten your endeavors. <laughs>